Hey ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags, and welcome aboard the Spitfire F Mark 22. I'm not going to go too much into the details of this aircraft, you all know this plane, it's been in the game for a while. This is a rank 4 battle rating 6 fighter of the British Air Tree, and it's armed with four 20mm Mark V Espano cannons with 630 rounds of ammunition. And once again, we are on Hokkaido. Now today's match, well, it was a bit of an interesting one. I think everybody lost their minds a little bit, honestly, when I was uh, having this particular play session. This was one of 21 matches, almost in a row, on Hokkaido, also known as Guam. Yes, the Operation Hokkaido map is not actually Hokkaido, it is Guam. I've made jokes about this in the past, but yeah, if you check the maps, that's actually what we're flying over. Preparation Hokkaido was actually one of several operations that were planned in World War II for the invasion of the Japanese home islands, which never actually came to pass due to the dropping of the atomic bomb. Interestingly, Hokkaido is wrong. This particular lineup of aircraft is wrong. Hokkaido is on the north side of Japan, and should the Japanese home islands have been invaded, Hokkaido likely would have been invaded by Russian forces, not British or American forces. Allied forces would have likely invaded through Okinawa into Kumamoto. Anyways, we're fresh off the runway and I've just turned left and I'm climbing hard towards our secondary base. Well, more specifically, I'm climbing towards our far bombing point. This is something that, surprisingly, British forces don't do all the time. The far base is the one that is least likely for enemy bombers to be intercepted when dropping, and at rank 4 these matches are always, always going to have bombers in them. They are extremely popular after all, and as you can see we have a B-17 coming in. So if you can get to altitude in something like a Spitfire fast enough, over that bombing point, you will get a perfectly lined up head on, because at this point, this bomber's in his bomb site getting ready to release. And he's now out of the game, so that's my first kill already done. Incidentally, on most bombers, that is the safest way to approach them. So from this point, I'm going to head down the field and I'm looking for fighters. We have an F-8F low, we have a, another B-17 up high. I'm going to take a shot at the B-17. I'm coming from a low enough angle that he likely hasn't noticed me. And I'm going to try and put some into his belly, but unfortunately, just not quite enough angle. Getting too close to stall speeds, couldn't bring the nose up fast enough. It was worth a crack. I was honestly at no risk actually performing that manoeuvre. Now I'm just in level flight, picked up some altitude, got to pick my airspeed up and go and see if we can find some fighters. Now as I said before, this match got a little silly in the midsection and I think that was simply because of the number of times this map was popping up. I know there was much rejoicing in chat when we finally got that match of Berlin about halfway through this run of what felt like near solid and unending prep Kaido. I think the biggest problem, it's not so much the map. The map is relatively irrelevant to the match itself. You, it, it's important, but flying over this environment, like it's not a bad map in terms of looks, and it does funnel everybody into a good fight in the center section. It's that at each tier, you tend to find the same aircraft will be deployed over and over again. The matches are very stagnant. American forces will always consist of primarily B-29s or B-17s and F-8Fs. There will be occasionally the odd duck in there, but for the most part, that is the core of the American forces. The British on the other side, F-22 and F-24 Spitfires, with the occasional Tempest thrown into the mix. Occasionally, you'll get a couple of Sterlings and maybe a Lancaster, but again, the core is pretty much settled for what the enemy fighters and what the Allied fighters are going to be. When you get into jet matches, it's always going to be Thunder Jets and it's always going to be Meteor F Mark III's because these are the two most competitive jets for either nation in the game and it doesn't change. So you feel like... It feels like it's a map, but it's not. It's the aircraft being flown are always very similar. So we found ourselves a Bearcat to engage and miss on the first pass, but I managed to get shots in on the second. We smoked his engine, it looks like I've done his cooling system in and I've popped his oil system, continuing to follow. Now, that is what happens when you accidentally hit the flap key as you're in a dive. Bad things, don't do that. Second Spitfire has dropped in and due to my slight delay there as I rip the flaps off, he's managed to slip in front, so I'm going to continue engaging and carefully shoulder shooting. I'm not a terrible shot, not a perfect shot, but I'm pretty sure I can get shots into him without taking out the Spitfire in front. And this is where things started to get a little silly. So first up, I'm having to pick my shots fairly carefully here. I want to minimize my chance of accidentally hitting the Spitfire that's maneuvering in between by maximizing the chance of hitting the Bearcat. Then of course my screen gets covered in oil, so now I'm sort of shooting at the markers rather than the planes, can't really see what's going on. Pull a bit of altitude to disengage, Spitfire pulls up in front and is promptly set on fire by another Spitfire. 
Now it looks like we're actually three up on this bear cat at the moment, but we're actually not. There is a fourth Spitfire Mark IX floating around behind us as well that is also trying to engage. He's dodging around just behind me. You'll hear his engine note cutting in and out. Finally get my shots in, critical hit, take out the tail control, and in he goes. And as I pull for altitude out of the back, the other Spitfire drops in to unload half his ammunition into the wreck while it's in the water. This is arcade gameplay right now. But anyway, I'm down to 107 rounds of ammunition. The rest of the enemy team appears to be at altitude, and at this point, I thought this is pretty much going to be the end of the match. So time to head over towards the runway. We've already had one guy who has returned and landed, and I'm pulling about third place for the team at the moment, so I am fairly comfortable and fairly happy with the performance. That and I needed a moment to stop laughing. That moment of ridiculousness back there before just had me in stitches. I don't know why. I just could not contain myself from laughing. I had to take my hands off the controls so I didn't jerk the aircraft all through the sky as I was flying back to base. So a couple of minutes have passed, we're on final approach for the runway, but 640 kilometers an hour is a little bit quick to bring this thing in for a landing. So I'm gonna do my normal, regular braking maneuver, which I do with pretty much everything. Just throw the aircraft into a tight spiral. The idea is to try and get the aircraft to almost stall speeds and then hold the nose up. And as you descend, you'll maintain the airflow you need in order to come in on the runway and bring the aircraft in for a comfortable landing. On the Spitfire, it's actually a little bit more important than that because it has a rather low wheel rip speed. You'll tear your landing gear off quite easily if you're over 300 kilometers an hour, so you need to get down below 300 coming for landing. And then a P-47M shows up and starts strafing out the runway, so it looks like we're back in business. Retract the landing gear, bring the aircraft into a hard left bank, and throttle up to wet. Time to get this airspeed back up and start moving in on this target, since he's low to the deck. He's going to be one of the last aircraft left on the enemy team. Now, I'm not going to be able to catch a P-47M out of a dive. There's just no way that's happening from landing speeds. So instead, I'm gonna go straight for altitude and climb like a champion. The Spitfire Mark 22 climbs like a homesick angel. So rip this thing back into the sky while the P-47 is low. Now, I don't need to intercept him. He's made it very obvious that he wants kills right now. He wants to engage. It's why he took the risk of strafing out aircraft on a runway while AAA was active. So he is going to turn back and he is going to try and take me. So I'm sitting myself at about 300 kilometers an hour. I want to pull directly over the top of him. He is going to have the airspeed, although he has burnt some of it doing his U-turn to come back. He was looking to engage the aircraft that was taking off the Wyvern, but he is not going to be able to do it and then pull the Spitfire into a sharp climb. The P-47M is going to try and burst climb. The thing is, he's probably not going a whole lot faster than I am, but he is a hell of a lot heavier with a hell of a lot lower climb rate. He's not going to be able to maintain this, but I can. And there we go, I can see the P-47M is starting to stall. I'm doing everything I can to try and keep the nose of this aircraft up for a few seconds longer. Then we tip it over, give it a little bit of rudder to drop the nose down fast and bring it in on a dive. Now at this point I'm gonna use all this altitude to rapidly close speed on the P-47M. He's burnt all his speed in that vertical climb. There is no way known he's going to be outrun me at this point. I only have 107 rounds, so I need to aim pretty smooth, but I have the maneuvering advantage on a P-47 as well. He's trying to get away, take the lead. And there we go, my third kill of the match. And we'll put the rest of the ammunition into him as well, because why not? That is the last aircraft remaining on the team. So with the P-47M eliminated, we turn back towards the runway to bring ourselves home, and that is the end of the match. So let's go through to the results. So the results for the match, we came in in second place for the team with three kills, 2,117 points, congratulations to Aquila in first place with Bombing Run, Fighter Rescuer, Shadow Strike Streak X3, The Best Squad, Terror of the Sky, and Bulletproof, 72,555 Silver Lions, and we finished up with 3,766 research points, nothing going to anything of course, it all just disappears into the ether as all British aircraft are currently researched. So, the first and third kills were pretty clean cut, pretty well flown, I think, in my opinion. That second kill, however, that was ridiculous. The only way they could have gotten any more ridiculous than what it was is if there was a couple more team kills mixed in the middle there as well. But surprisingly, this was a hell of a lot of fun to fly. I haven't been doing a lot of rank 4 matches in the Allies over the last few months, and actually what you see here is part of the reason why. There's only so many times I can play Preparation Akaido before I start losing my mind, and unfortunately it does tend to come up often. With American heavy bombers and the high-end British Spitfires being so popular, this is the map that constantly seems to get into rotation. 
I would like that changed, however. The Hokkaido map, or Preparation Hokkaido map, as I said earlier on, is actually, well, it would have been probably a Soviet invasion area if, so, if the Soviet Union had decided to take part in the invasion of the Japanese home islands, which, let's be honest, they probably would have. This would be interesting if Hokkaido had a bit of a change-up. There is an alternate history version of Berlin already available, where the Russians can replace the Germans against the Allies. The same thing here, possibly putting the Russians on Hokkaido versus the Americans and the British as an alternative preparation map. I'd also like to see another map added to the game, something else where allied forces, British and American, can go head-to-head -head against one another that is not Preparation Hokkaido, just to change it up a little bit. A bit of map variance does help everything out, but as I said earlier, I think also part of the problem is that, well, really people have their popular fighters, and there are certain aircraft that are very good within War Thunder's meta, and people are going to fly them, and that is always going to limit the number of aircraft you see in the sky at any particular tier. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to click like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of this content. And until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.